We're back and you're listening to the 904wed.com Real Talk Wedding Planning Podcast with my co-host and the files right on top there with Premier Bride of Northeast Florida, Magazine and Wedding Expo Extraordinaire. She is holding up that magazine. And the bride we are following her wedding journey of, that is Amber Flowers, right at the bottom of your screen, just below. And Amber, I've got to ask, we talked about your engagement party here in Jacksonville on our last episode, but since that's happened, you were supposed to go to Ohio for a second engagement party that did not happen. What happened with that engagement party? Uh, well, I mean, the kind of the obvious right now, but being that Florida just got hit pretty bad, um, you know, we're going to visit his, it's going to be on his grandfather's farm, which he is in his mid nineties. So we just, it kind of, his parents let us know that it was all going to be canceled. Then they just said, Oh, not canceled. Maybe we'll reschedule till September. I am sorry that happened, but uh, maybe two engagement parties back to back is too much engagement party, <laughs> right? You'll break it up, spread it out. Right. And, and hopefully it will be as great of an engagement party in September uh, as your first one was here uh, on the 4th of July. So Sorry that happened, but uh, that is the situation we're in right now. And you've got the Premier Bride Expo coming up. What precautions are you taking so that you know that we'll be able to get brides through there and not have any concerns about spread of COVID? Well, we're following all of the city of Jacksonville's rules and the CDC guidelines with the expo. So because it is an indoor space, um, we are making sure that everybody is going to be wearing masks. We're requiring that. We're going to be doing to put our checks at the door. We're asking if people, you know, don't feel good not to come to the expo. Um, and to keep your, your entourage, you know, a little bit smaller because we are definitely going to be monitoring crowds. So, you know, as brides get their tickets, we'll be giving them emails, letting them know when their ticketed entry time is to space out the crowds and make sure that everybody is socially distanced. Uh, our aisles are going to be larger. We're going to have directionals on the aisles. Um, there is all kinds of precautions. Um, I'm on the phone almost daily with the Prime Osborne going over everything and making sure all of my um, uh, protocols and setups are correct and in, in current with what's going on. Well, we will be staying in touch with you, I'm sure, about this. And I'll be very curious to hear Amber's perspective after she attends the Bridal Expo. We're going to get a whole breakdown, right? A whole post-game play-by-play of how you tackled the Bridal Expo and, and all the vendors you met, Amber. Let's talk about what you're in the middle of right now. We have done so much up till now, right? You have gone dress shopping with your 12-year-old goddaughter, gave her the final say. Obviously, you, you got engaged. We've gone. We've done the engagement party. You've picked the DJ. You're getting everything in order, but there are so many things to do. What is coming up right now? What's on the top of your mind? Uh, what's coming up after that is I'm going to uh, get started on my invitations and my save the dates because right now we wanted to push that forward due to we were going to shoot our photo, um, our pictures at the farm in Ohio. But so that's not going to happen. So we are going to adjust and get our photos done here or possibly actually use the one from our 4th of July because right now that'd be a great, I mean, we do have we didn't know we were going to have Richard Fleming there, right. so we can use those photos now. And we are going to start ordering invitations and pricing those out and seeing where we're going to go with that. So that's really next on my list. Let's let's get into this. And yeah, you, you were lucky having a surprise professional photographer there in Richard Fleming <laughs> yeah. to take these photos. I can only imagine how awesome they're going to be with the fireworks and all of you guys and, and you and your fiance there right in the center of it all. Uh, so... When it, we start talking invitations, right, this is going to probably be exciting to some people and other people are like, God, can I just send them out via email? But Anne, Amber, where do you start with this? Do you start with a budget and then you find the invitation that fits the budget or do you go and you, you shop around for invitations and how does this even begin? Well, I'm, I'm going to say it's at the top of my list at the bridal show. Um, I really want to see things in person and walking through the shows, that's something that I'm looking forward to shop around for at the different booths. So that's one of my, one of my priorities right now is on my list is invitations um, at the bridal show, for sure. 
And what can a bride or a groom or the, the, the mom, the parents expect when they come to the bridal expo when it comes to invitations? Is it just going to be one vendor that has it all? Or are there, are there going to be 10 or 20? Like what, what is reality? Um, reality, well, we, we definitely have a couple of calligraphers that come to the expo each time. And we do have some invitation companies that do very personal invitations like Couture Creations. And we have also other companies that sell invitations that might be, you know, online or might be a different option, you know, like Bed Bath & Beyond has some of those options. And we also sometimes have printers that come to the expo that can do them. And even, you know, our wedding um, planners also do invitations, some of them. So, you know, the more that you talk with people, they'll be able to help you out and at least point you in the right direction, depending on what your style is, what your budget is, and what you're looking for. Because invitations are a broad spectrum. I mean, we all know that you can order invitations online do them, you know, very efficiently, or you can go all out and you can have very custom invitations done that can, you know, be quite expensive. So it just really depends on like what your style is. Speaking of expensive, Amber, I've got to ask because we preach budget every single episode and we're trying to be very real about things. Do you have an invitation budget and is there any chance you're going to exceed it or are you going to hit it right there? And where did that budget even come from? Um, I did a little research and like Anne said, your wedding planners and stuff like that, they can really find, um, you know, they have connections in a lot of things. And that's another reason to hire one, not just for the invitations. I'm just kidding. Um, but a lot of different things and a lot of different outlets, but as far as the budget, okay, oof, my budget, um, is eight fifty for my invitations. Um, and I just, I'm keeping it a little open right now. So going to the Bridal Expo, I don't want to go over eight fifty, okay, at all. But and we're talking eight hundred and fifty dollars, not eight dollars and fifty per invite, but eight fifty overall, just under a thousand. No, yeah, no, I would, yes, under a thousand, and that would leave it. I think I'm not doing the math off the top of my head, but maybe four to six, four to seven dollars um, per, and. Now, is it per when I said, uh, you know, a suite, you know, I didn't know an invitation suite where does it include uh, your RSVP, your return, you save the date, all these different things. So when I go show your stamps, oh, that's another wax is, was a must. That was a must for me. Uh, I don't know what it does. It just does something to me, that little wax stamp. I'm like, I need that everywhere. Well, there's that yeah. stamp, right? And then there's the postage stamp. And so the postage stamp. Oh, the postage, yeah. Which is well, the return, because I, mean, I think be... it's up to like 55 <laughs> cents. So you're, and wedding invitations always cost more to mail than other, than a regular letter. So you yes. can do that in the budget as well. You might need to increase that budget. I don't know, but I, I'm hoping you're going to hit it. We're going to be holding you to it and seeing what happens with that. So, but you, you pick the ballpark number that you think you can live with. Is that that's the bottom line here? Right. Yeah, I think that that's where where it's at. And I'm 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 actually just I want them very simple. So it's not. It's definitely in the ballpark, and it's I know at least that price is what I'm happy with. And how how many people I know, Anne? You always say there is no normal, but you've got save the date. You've got your invites. What are the trends you're seeing out there? Is save the date still something that needs to be mailed? Is that going to be an email invite? Are you doing a wedding website, Amber, that's kind of integrated with the invitations? Like talk to me, what's happening here? Oh, save the date's a must, right? Is that Oh yeah. Definitely a save the date is the must. I mean, you need to let everybody know when your wedding is going to happen. And it's important, I believe, to mail things. I mean, I know that there is no normal right now, but maybe it's just loving print and and loving invitation mm-hmm. side of me that wants like the invitations to be formal. Um, I know people are all technology driven, but I still love the formality of getting <laughs> something pretty in the mail and having that. And I think that people take their wedding a lot more seriously too. If <laughs> it comes mm-hmm. in something formal, like, you know, a letter in, in the mail to you deliver. So I would definitely plan on, you know, a save the date and then a formal wedding invitation. I'm nervous for your budget, I'm Amber. I'm techie though. So just like you said, I, I am terrible because I do want, of course, we have to be 
we have to send them out. We are going to do that. But yeah, I know you mentioned the website, which we do have a website. And I feel like the details of things that are not so formal <laughs> um, should be on the website. And you can also, it's free uh, as far as mine, how I'm doing it. And I can share with you guys later on. But it is something um, as the bride that I'm taking a little bit more responsibility myself to do it, uh, drive a lot of uh, traffic towards the website for those little questions because they drive me crazy. Um, and so I'll have that. So on the invitation, I know in previous episodes we said, you know, how do I word, don't take your shoes off. <laughs> like I do not want any bare feet, but I'm going to put that. No, not in the formal invitation that's in the mail. I'm going to put that on the website. I would probably put that in a formal invitation in the mail because you also have to account for like the age of your guests. If you're inviting a lot of family who are older, they are not going to go to your website to look at these things. Um, Younger people will probably go and click on the website, but a lot of older people are going to reference your invitation. Probably your invitation. Right. So if there's some like really important Um, information that you want communicated, Put it in the formal invitation because that's really what people are going to be focusing on. Oh, I don't know how I can do that in a formal. Don't take your shoes off. Dot dot dot. <laughs> I'm just picturing well, a little icon with shoes and a slash <laughs> through the. I will, right, that's I, a will say, way. I will say this. So I pulled out my wedding invitation. Uh oh. Here we go. Oh, and um, I know. And, well, okay, so there's a lot of backstory to this wedding invitation, so I will, like, won't go into like every single detail. Uh, hold on, I just took it apart, and I was going to give you the formal view of it. So our theme for our wedding was a secret garden, because we didn't know exactly if our uh, wedding venue was going to be finished or not. So like, <laughs> we had, um, oh, I had these beautiful. laser cut, I had these laser cut um, wedding invitations designed, so it was like a garden gate, and then. You slid it out, ah. and then on the back side, well, this was the formal wedding invitation with all of our information, and then on the back side had all of the uh, the details that I wanted on this. And so this is something I know Amber loves details, and I really want to stress this with like our brides as well. Is that this was my great grandparents' calling card that my wow. grandfa- my great grandfather used nice touch. to give to my grandmother when they were dating. And so I had um, Beth Creative, who's my graphic designer for the magazine. She's also a photographer. She took the roses and the, and the flowers on this calling card and integrated them into our wedding invitation. So that like I wanted fantastic. to incorporate, you know, like the family traditions and things like that in there too. So she did that. But here well, is I got the one. <laughs> I, got I know. It's so and it's cute. cool because not everybody knows everything special about your wedding, but you guys do. And you remember. Yes. It. And that's, you know, I feel you when you're going through this wedding planning process because I'm super sentimental and I did a ton of stuff too. So I love that you're doing it as well and like sharing the story about it. But the first thing that my guests opened up when they saw my wedding invitation was wedding unplugged. And I told people they were not allowed to use their cell phones. Nobody took pictures at my wedding. Um, so Very that important. was one of the big things. That is something like, I want to. Yeah. So I explained to everybody that the wedding was unplugged and that nobody was allowed to pull out their cell phones at the ceremony service. And I actually had my cousins with squirt guns standing in the back. And <laughs> the Stop. Stop. No, Did anyone no. get wet? Did anyone get no. wet? No one got wet, but okay. the officiant told everyone that if they were to pull out their phone and take a picture during the ceremony, that the bride and groom had authorized the security team standing there with squirt guns, super soakers, that they could wet them. <laughs> Only y'all. I love it. That that's is that's fantastic. clever. Fantastic. So I have to find that picture and share it with you guys some other time. But yeah, so the important stuff you want to put into your formal invitation. I see. That was a great example because now I, I totally get it. And that's an important note, you know, for people that haven't attended weddings on a regular basis, because you're, you're not in the wedding circuit, right? Or you, you, you only attend one every five or 10 years, whatever the story is. Lately, if you don't do the wedding unplugged announcement, the card, whatever it is, it, it's like the paparazzi. There's phones on everywhere. It really takes away from it. And it's going to show up in your photos or it's going to get cropped out and you're going to wonder where your, where your crowd was. It, it's not a good look. Yes. Yeah. 
Instagram. So, Absolutely. So the bottom line is, Amber, you're going to go to the expo. You're going to see tons of great examples. I'm not sure if they're going to be as good as what Ann just showed up, but it does not surprise me to see Ann well, bust Becky, out something like that. Becky will be at the expo. So if you do want to talk to her about creating custom invitations, you know, I can make the introduction. Just a little plug. And that's the beautiful part about the expo is you've got someone like Ann there and, and all the other vendors that know each other that are all there to support each other and make recommendations. And and while there is some competition between vendors, I, I would call it friendly competition. No one's everyone understands that every wedding needs to be unique. You gotta find the right match with each vendor and and hopefully that's what you'll end up, you know, finding there, Amber. And I gotta ask, and Amber too, where did you find that invite so quickly? Are you keeping that somewhere special? I know, I know, Anne, you're in the wedding business. So, so maybe these things are just right at your desk, but how do you keep this as a keepsake going forward? I have a box. Ooh. You have a box? Yeah. A dedicated box? Yeah. I have a box and, um, that I keep in a, and well, it's actually my nightstand. Um, but it has a Aww. lot of, you know, the wedding, um, memorabilia and stuff that I use to incorporate into my wedding. Um, that I keep there for reference. Okay, so you asked. I have to tell you that my fiance got me the cutest gift. We just celebrated our first, uh, our one year, and he he paid to, he paid such good attention to detail. Um, but you said he bought me this keepsake box, and I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this. I personally haven't, but they do it for a bunch of different things, um, kids and birthdays, and it's a very organized kind of keepsake box from Saver. Never heard of it, but it's really stylish. I have to show you and I'll show you guys. Um, I'll send you something too, but there's these little personalized keepsake boxes that you can stack on shelves or whatever. And this one, this one says you and me and you can put, there's comes with envelopes that you can label. I am obsessed with being organized and you can put your little abbreviation things on there. I don't know. But so I opened it up because he's tired of seeing me stuff these in our, the, you know, the drawer, the special drawer. And I have everything down. The first time we kissed, I have a gum wrapper. Like, come on. I need to stop. But it's going in the keepsake <laughs> box. So this was our one year anniversary. And I thought it was so, so thoughtful, so sentimental. So I can't wait to kind of start. And I'm keeping it right here because he doesn't want all these drawers to be a little crazy. We're moving into a new home in, what, 26 days. So now he's like, organize it and make it really pretty. And you can present like all these things on the shelf. So you guys have to check it out. I'm very, very, very shocked that he did this because it's so freaking thoughtful. So kudos, keepsake. <laughs> kudos to your fiance. He clearly knows who he is marrying here because yes. I, I can tell from the get go. If you go back and listen to any episode, there's a sentimental little tidbit in everything that you have done along the way. So he is, I'm telling you, he is, I am so lucky. I promise. Like he is just, he pays attention in so many details and I don't know, ladies, I am just spoiled. I am just spoiled. <laughs> well, at least you know it. You're not taking it for granted. So that's awesome no, to hear. But, crazy, no. but speaking about details, let, let's be real honest with everyone. We don't talk a whole lot about who you're using as a planner here. You're, you're not using a planner specifically just because of the the nature of, of the industry that you're in. You're, you're a hair and makeup artist. Your, your mom uh, and dad run the catering company. Like you've got all these connections. So you're using a wedding planner, but not in the most traditional sense. You do have a day of coordinator that the venue is providing, which is uh, pretty, I'm not going to say common, but we see that a lot, right, Anne? I think uh, a lot of venues do this to make sure that it's a successful day because no one wants to have anybody, you know, anyone leave a bad review or have a bad taste. Um, so let's talk about the venue first. We we know you're using Chandler Oaks. Now, they're providing a day of coordinator, which is not a planner. How, I don't know who wants to take this question, but what's the difference between a day of coordinator and what a planner is going to do for you? Uh, or maybe even a, a non-venue coordinator as well. Like, can you mix them all together? What, how are you making this work? Okay, so the difference, the, between a, <laughs> <laughs> the difference between a day of coordinator and a full-service wedding planner. Now, there's actually a lot of different packages that wedding planners can provide. So a day of coordinator is somebody that is going to call your vendors. They will make sure that there's a time coordination, making sure that people arrive at certain times, and they're going to help with the flow of the day. 
that person is going to be there. They know the venue typically inside and out. A lot of day of coordinators, um, you know, might be certified to work at certain properties or allowed to work at certain properties um, because they know, you know, extension cords, you know, where they're at. They know what plugs need to go where, you know, they know everything about the property. So there's not going to be any big surprises with the day of coordinator. And then a full service planner is somebody that is going to, that can work with you as much or as little as you as you need. I mean, we have some amazing wedding planners on the first coast and some of them will go with you to your dress fittings. You know, they're going to go with you to your cake tastings. They're going to set up everything. I mean, they're going to be full service. They're going to be with you all the time, you know, answering your questions. And helping you, you know, really holding your hand through the entire process. So there's a good mix. in, you know, if you're looking to hire a wedding planner or a coordinator, which I definitely suggest 100%, yes. um, you know, feel what feels right for you. You know, how much service do you mm -hmm. want? And you can talk to a lot of different people. And like I said, they have all kinds of different packages. So it's not like a one size fits all. Amber, explain to, to everyone listening who's wondering how are you doing this without a planner? Having the day of coordinator is going to make your day stress-free. I have no doubts about that, but how are you pulling this off without a planner yourself? Um, well, I, I'm really not. Uh, since being in the business and my mom, um, and before that, my grandmother was a planner and a wedding designer, and then my mom. So I, like I said, weddings really are in my bloodline. So I have a lot of trusting people in the circle. Uh, and then, of course, Amy over at Chandler is phenomenal day of. And, you know, they do offer other packages, like Ann said. They can customize it. If you do want somebody that's six months or it really involved, you, they, they have that. I just, um, I grew up with it. So I'm kind of going with what I grew up doing. And my mom, of course, I do not want her there day of and going crazy. So that's where Amy's coming in. And um, Rose, my mother's assistant, she's excellent. Uh, so she's going to be there as well. So I'll have planners uh, helping me and guiding me kind of with the vision coming to reality thing over at Chandler. Yeah. And there's, I know there's planners who come to your show who people can, mm -hmm. can use. Do you, wh when is the best time to, to pick up a planner? if there even is a best time. I know budget is, is number one. Everyone, including the planners I speak to, say, get your budget together first because that is the most important number. But uh, where do planners fit in it from a traditional sense for someone who doesn't have the well, connections that Amber might? I think planners can definitely fit in as the first vendor that you select, um, you know, in a lot of cases. Because if you really don't know anything about wedding planning, and you don't know what direction you want to go in, and you're not really familiar with venues, and you're not really, um, you know, you just, you, and you don't have the time to do it, the first person that you want to hire is your wedding planner, because they can honestly help you through every step of the situation. But you can also hire a wedding planner in the middle of the process. You know, sometimes you might go through the venue and the photographer and the wedding um, and the cake and the flowers. And you might find that it's just too much and that you don't have the time to finish mm -hmm. off the last of the details. So you can pick them up in the middle of it. I mean, there's no, there's no set time when you have to hire one. It just depends on how much service you want. But I swear, please, everybody, at least hire a day of coordinator please. because you need somebody to wrangle in your bridesmaids and tell people when to walk down the aisle and make sure that the cake is arriving at a certain time and that it's placed in the right thing. I mean, who do you want in charge of your decorations? Right. Who do you want in charge of cleanup of the venue as and, well? And you know what? Yeah. They're there's so cheaper much. than a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what you're going to need if you don't hire one. At the one. end of the yeah. day, they're cheap. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's very, yeah, that's very good advice. It's like the <laughs> best money spent, you know? And I think it like really you is. can talk your parents into it maybe, or maybe, you know, <laughs> ask your parents for one for a gift because it's going to make their wedding experience so much better. So the moms don't feel like everything is on their shoulders as well. So it is mm -hmm. really like the best money you can spend. I think is hiring somebody to be there and do what needs to be done and do the dirty work on the data. 
And, and for those of you that watched episode two, I'm sorry to tell you that Amber's goddaughter is not available as a dress shopper yet, but give her a few years and <laughs> you might be able to bring her along for a fee uh, just to help you uh, make that fashion decision there. But Amber, let's, let's take your temperature real quick, right? Where do you stand on things? Are you stressed out right now? What's on your mind? What's got you worried uh, since you, you don't have that planner to go to other than your parents, right? And your, your friends in the business, but what, what's got you concerned right now? And how are you smiling? How are you doing that right now? Um, it's because my, well, my mom is my planner. She's my therapist. She said, so she's just not day of. So that phone call where I have questions, um, I, I'm, I'm not stressing cause I'm really in good hands and let's just, I'll be very honest. If I, if I wasn't in the business, I like, Anne just said, it probably would be my first priority is to find a trustworthy, um, uh, wedding planner for sure. Uh, cause you don't realize a uh, day of how many phone calls you are going to get as the bride, even just going through this engagement party. I got so many pointless phone calls that you don't realize it gets, it made me, I'm like, why are they texting me about, should they wear these blue jeans to these white jeans? Like, what are they doing? Like, you can't make this day-to-day -day decision on your own. Uh, so you're going to get these pointless questions the day of. And I'm staying calm, Wes, to answer your question is because I actually am in excellent hands. Um, but there's little things that I did stress out about just even planning the engagement party. That's not even the wedding yet. And I think I came up to you and was like, oh my gosh, when it's your own, it's completely yeah. different. It's where Bridezilla comes out, remember? Right? That's <laughs> true. Yeah. We're going to try to keep those Bridezilla moments to a minimum for everyone, but it happens. <laughs> It happens, and you're going to find out exactly what kind of Bridezilla moments Amber does or doesn't have if you subscribe and continue watching this podcast brought to you by Premier Bride of Northeast Florida, 904wed.com, jackshomes.com. We're pooling our resources together to follow Amber along in her wedding journey. Amber, cannot wait to check in with you in another week. Find out how things have gone, where we stand on those invites and all the other big decisions you're making, and... If I don't speak to you before your expo coming up, best of luck to you. Cannot wait to hear how that goes down. Two weeks away from this podcast, but by the time you're actually hearing this, it might be the day before. I'm really not sure, uh, but stay tuned. We have so much more to talk about. Amber, your wedding is what, nine months away? Am I doing the math right on that? Just under nine months? I think it's, yeah, just it's coming up. It's going to fly by. Cannot wait for that. So. For all of you out there, listen along, stay tuned, subscribe, watch more. And Amber will be checking in with you in another week. Thank you so much for listening to the 904wed.com podcast. Check out our links in uh, our bio section to learn more about the vendors that we've recommended and talked about here. And be sure to hit the 904wed.com website and the Premier Bride of Northeast Florida Expo coming up as well to meet all of these people in person. Thank you so much. And we will catch you on our next episode.